Hey, sorry I've been gone so long. I've been, uh, busy. Hail to the King Deathbat is a video game. You can play it, although you may not want to, because this game was built from the ground up by Avenge Sevenfold. But Avenge Sevenfold is a metalcore band. They don't know how to write code. Yeah, and neither do programmers. I hate to break it to you, but copy and pasting isn't a real job. And the fact that game developers have the nerve to charge $60 for video games is just insulting. But just remember, I lied. The game was actually developed by Subscience Studios, but I still want to believe that M. Shadows himself wrote every line of code. And meticulously like animated a death bat onto every single polygon of this game. In case you haven't noticed, this game is just a wee bit edgy. That's because M. Shadows actually did write the story himself, and not for a moment is he gonna let you forget to look for City of Evil in stores on November 13th. In this universe, every single quirk in existence is shaped like a death bat. Every rock has a trademark Avenged Sevenfold logo on it. Your health bar? Death bat. Your bonus level counter? Death bat. The world map? Death bat. This guy? Romanian. But what is what is this game even about, I hear you ask? Suffering agony, torture, but that's just the gameplay. The story is very deep and dripping with philosophical nuance in every line of dialogue. I do, however, have a degree in Dark Souls lore, so allow me to summarize the rich lore of this universe. 2,000 years ago, just before the birth of Jesus Christ, the novel Battle Royale was published and subsequently lost to the Sands, to be uncovered in the year 2000 by Takeshi Kitano. He then proceeded to make a movie about the novel. The movie became the third highest grossing Japanese film at the box office in the year 2000, right behind Spirited Away and Pokemon Forever. A very particular viewer of the movie, Brendan Gein, otherwise known as Player Unknown, was inspired by the film to create a video game based on the premise of Battle Royale. Player Unknown's Battlegrounds became immensely popular, leading to many studios creating similar games. Epic Games, who was desperate to squeeze some profit out of their failed zombie survival game Fortnite, implemented a Battle Royale mode. Why do you hate that show so much? Metro boom and make it boom. Anyway, you play as Marvin Heemeyer, a walking metaphor for the active player base of Bloons TD Battles 2. After being slain by the God of Evil, you have been resurrected to travel the land and correct the injustice of society and observe as much Avenge Sevenfold merchandise as possible. Accompanied by your best friend, the Rep. Moving on, you start the game in a dungeon, because where the fuck else would it be? Hey, you. Finally awake. Greetings Marvin Hemeyer. Despite not sounding like one, I am the tutorial MILF. I have imprisoned you here for... uh... your benefits. Okay, can I leave? Of course you would ask that. Are you gaslighting me? No, that's something you made up. <clears throat> anyway, if you want to leave, you're gonna have to rub this lotion on your skin and let me watch. I don't want to do that. It puts the lotion on its skin. And if I don't? If you don't, then I will have no choice but to have my queers break your legs. Niggas think I'm fighting to save the day! But really, nigga, I just like to fight! Uh, congratulations, that was a test and you passed. I will now help you to beat Dark Marvin Hemmeyer. Would you like to buy my mystery liquid? What? No. How about now? After escaping from Hillary Clinton's sex dungeon, you gain access to the world map. And what do you know? It's New Jersey. I've been in the hills. The first thing you'll notice is once you enter a level is, where is the fucking dodge button? Avenge Sevenfold are hardcore gamers that frankly found Kitty Souls to be way too easy, so naturally they decided to remove the dodge button, giving players absolutely no defensive options whatsoever <laughs> other than constantly buying potions from the green goober. This is because under capitalism, things like food, water, and healthcare are created for the sole purpose of generating profit. Therefore, supply and demand must be artificially inflated in order for capitalists to justify their existence, and I wouldn't have it any other way. But unless you want to constantly trudge back to the witch to buy more Narcan, your only option is to just kill the enemy faster than they kill you, and Deathbag gives you plenty of tools for just that. I of course mean two tools, a sword and a glock. The sword is pretty straightforward. You walk up to an enemy and flail around like a deranged tweaker until something happens. This is supposed to be the more risky option compared to the magic that you can spam from a distance. However, the direction that the magic goes in is tied to the direction your character is facing, and you can only look in eight directions, meaning you almost always miss your shots and waste your precious blue G fuel. I personally love this system, as it allows me to simulate the feeling of being a drone strike operator in the US military, meticulously calculating the position and coordinates of my enemy so that I can determine the optimal trajectory of my payload to achieve maximum- this doesn't even do that much 
damage. Real talk, if you want to completely turn this game into more of a joke, just spam the sword button on every enemy and move your character in circles like this. This lets you get in quick hits without trading damage most of the time, and save up your magic for when you get to a boss fight and you can literally shred every single boss in 5 seconds. Other than that, just constantly spam potions and you'll never die. It did take me quite a while to figure that out though, so I ended up dying a lot. I am actually begging, please don't kill me, I swear to you. Yeah, no, I get it. It's, it's the lyric from A Little Piece of Heaven. I have, like, no HP left. Oh, my. you're not fucking real, dude. Yeah, no, I get it. It's the line from A Little Piece of Heaven. Oh, and if you die five times in a level, you have to start the level from the beginning. But enough of that. We're not here for the combat. No! We're here for the impeccable level design. Who could forget such brilliant areas as Nightmare, Afterlife, A Little Piece of Heaven, and Bat Country. A level where you fight hordes of, you guessed it, scorpions. And the Bat King, who is, you guessed again, a minotaur. Is there a single actual bat in this game? Oh, never mind. Long and hard hast thou fought, Marvin. No, I haven't. This is the first level. But unfortunately, your quest comes to an end, for I am you, but evil. Does that mean that Marvin Hemeyer wasn't evil? Yes! <laughs> now, on to the Granby Cementing Plant. I'm be ready to put that knife in me chest, innit, bruv? I'm gonna be a lot of for stabbing Roy! You cannot kill me, Marvin Hemer, for I have the Granby Zone Association on my side. Dear God. Anyways, bye. If you think this script sucks, just know that this is better writing than the in-game dialogue. You could shut the fuck up! Although we have established that this game's godlike storytelling puts shitter souls to shame, the devs do humbly take a few pages out of Michael Zaki's book by never explaining why your character is going to these levels. Why the hell am I in Arizona? Why is there 50 fireball traps? How come when I hit the escape key, it boots me out of the game? You know, the escape key, the button that in every other game to ever fucking exist on PC is the button to pause the game? Yeah, how come when I touch that, it immediately closes the game and makes me restart whatever level? Level I was playing. How is this game so unbelievably dog shit? All that's fine and dandy until we reach level 4 where the game starts to actually be kinda enjoyable? So when you arrive in Babylon, M Shadows decides to stop being a cunt and make good levels. I'm honestly not sure what it is about this level, but it just looks so much better than every other one. The enemies are spaced out so you stop getting jumped, and the environmental traps are dialed down a lot. The level follows Doom logic of collecting key cards to unlock doors, except literally every key card is two feet away from the previous door, so the level just becomes a game of remembering where each number coded door is. If you happen to score well on the object permanence test, you'll do fine. Oh hi there, I'm just waiting for the corn show to start. I'm their biggest fan. I'll never never miss a show, even if it's in a video game. Uh, I hate to break it to you, but you're in an Avenged Sevenfold game. And? It's an Avenged Sevenfold show in an Avenged Sevenfold game. Avenged Sevenfold is playing here, not Korn. Oh, so that's why there's nobody here. Those guys must have really fell off. At least they didn't make all in the family. Die slow. Already did. This level's boss fight is pretty alright. It almost had subtlety for a moment. Both stages are both complete onslaughts with absolutely no way to dodge the beast attack, so I hope you stocked up on potions. The harlot stage of the fight is basically the Crystal Sage from Dark Souls 3. Then the game, with its impeccable level transitions, pulls the old won the boss fight lost in the cutscene gimmick to send you to hell. Like, actual hell. Which, in a game as edgy as this, is basically just the fire level. Except here in hell, you have to solve FUN puzzles by memorizing RGB Hebrew and activating towers to the corresponding order, and if you mess up, you get jumped by r slash hell of a brothel and have to start the whole FUN puzzle again. As much as this makes me want to Persona 3 myself, it actually caught me off guard by having a well-written character. I didn't know those existed in this universe. You meet this stupid, dumbass kid, and he's all like, wee wee, where's my brother? And then I'm all like, sorry kid, you're in Flint, Michigan. <laughs> and then it turns out this kid is actually Kane. You know, 
from the Bible, and you have to fight him. And the only way to damage him is to attack his dead brother. Why does the worst level have the only good boss fight? After sending Cain back to Vampire the Masquerade, we graduate from r slash hell of a brothel to r slash church of Mineta, where every single member, thankfully, has met their end at the hands of- they literally just took that girl from the music video and made her into a boss fight. I'm pretty sure at this point the devs figured out that you can just cheese every boss with magic, so they gave you two bosses in a row that are immune to magic as a way of telling you to knock it off. Unfortunately, all of my remaining object permanence was spent in Babylon, and I have lost all pattern recognition. That's okay though, because M Shadows is so proud of these bosses that he makes you fight all of them again in a boss rush, because the budget for this game ran out in the first level. But at long last, you come face to face with your shadow self. <laughs> Evil me, why have you done this? Why have you allowed the cementing plant to cut off access to my muffler shop? I don't have to explain anything. Eat shit and die. I'm gonna make you wish your parents never fucked. You'll never catch me when I fly into this. this fucking puddle or whatever. Ah, shit, he has wings too. Any last words? If you strike me down now, I shall become more powerful than you could possibly imagine. Shut up, I don't care. Ah! With Dark Marvin Hemeyer slain, I can finally restore the Elden Ring and stop playing this fucking game. I give Hail to the King Deathbed an astounding 11 out of 10. My speedrun time is 6 hours and 36 minutes. Yes, this was a speedrun video, although I already know that nobody is gonna beat my time because nobody wants to play this garbage. Shut the fuck up, you cunt! As I'm recording this video, it turns out two people have actually already speedrun this game. How the fuck they did it in 1 minute and 33 seconds will forever be a mystery to me. Wash my hands? Why? Just because I pissed? Why do you think my cock is dirty? <laughs>